Hi everybody, this is Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook, and I'm here today to talk about options for uh, Springathon 2021. Uh, each year, this is a read, a read along or a reading challenge that um, is hosted by several people, but one of my friends, Natalie, from Curious Reader is one of the hosts. And um, I always want to participate because it's nature books and things that are right up my alley. So what I'm going to do is I try to make this as easy as possible. I didn't know. It, anytime I say that, it's not easy. But what I wanted to do is tell you a little bit about the challenge and tell you 10 books that are possible options for me to read. I am probably going to read one, maybe two. <laughs> I don't know. Um, which one yet because I'm dipping in each of them right now so we'll let you know but I'm going to give you some because I always like watching this time of year all the videos so I can get ideas of books and what I usually do is I just keep them in a, an ongoing like kind of cumulative TBR of different nature books that I could read so um, hopefully this will be helpful for anybody that wants to participate or read some I mean read these books all year round this is this challenge is, you know, is now, but it's definitely just like with any book, you can read it any time of year and we, we should, right? So for this reading challenge, it's from May 1st to the 14th. That's first to know. I don't even listen to that. I'm, I wish they would do it for the whole month. I am not a two week person for anything. So I break the rules already. I am going to go for the whole month of May. Um, and that's the month, you know, that's the time period where they'll be actively um, really talking about things and and you'll see a lot of stuff all online. Natalie, like I said, a curious reader is one of the hosts. Emma at a couple books. Doris at all the books. Juliana, um, she has a website. And Heidi, hi Heidi, um, is from My Reading Life. She's also one of the hosts for this. And their prompts are migration and home slash home. So you can loosely interpret these any way you want. Um, Bloom and Decay um bloomer just slash decay is another one the third one is forage and hibernate i can't even read my own writing and a fourth is buzz stillness and they have a group read this year which i don't remember them doing that last year so i'm excited about that and i will talk i think i have that book in here i'll talk about that when i talk about the 10 books that i thought were possible options for this challenge like i said again i'm going to run it through may in you know me, I'll probably not finish something. It'll spill into June. But the point is that we get ourselves to read more um, books about nature, nonfiction books. You can, you know, they, they, this is so nice because they've left it open so that you could read um, memoirs. Um, and it doesn't have to just be a book, you know, a, a nature book per se like that. So, so that's really cool. So I have a list in my book here, like a bunch of books that I had had been writing down and I picked 10 of them and because I'm too lazy I don't know which, which is worse you know I'm too lazy to kind of flip through them all the covers of them because I don't own any of these on my Kindle I printed them on paper and I'm going to try to show you the covers on the paper so you can get a chance because guess what Belinda still didn't learn how to make that little on one side of the video that you can see the cover. I'm going to do it this year. This is the year I'm going to do it so that I can just alleviate this extra stuff here, right? Um, all right, that's it. I don't want to take up all your time. So here are the 10 books that I think are possible options. I didn't pay attention when I picked these books, whether they fit into the categories, but I know they will fit into each one will fit into at least one. You can always pick a book that covers them all, which is a great, great thing I love to do. Um, or, or multiple you know categories as well so the first book I picked and, and these books I picked because it's just my interest so again there's so much stuff you can choose um, that's where it's lying so the first one is the nature fix and it's why nature makes us happier healthier and more creative and it's by Florence Williams this one was published in 2018 and the reason why this book is really interesting to me is I like the idea of um, of our interconnectedness with nature. I am a strong believer of that and I like when I can find something and a resource and a book that kind of um, can help make that argument so that more people can understand and for myself, for me to learn even more of my connection to nature and how it affects us. Um, in here, I'll read a little brief from it. From forest trails in Korea to islands in Finland to eucalyptus groves in California, Florence Williams investigates the science behind nature's positive effects on the brain. Now we all know we need that right now. 
Delving into brand new research, she uncovers the power of the nat natural world to improve health, promote reflection and innovation, and strengthen our relationships. As our modern lives shift dramatically indoors, these ideas and the answers they yield are more urgent than ever. So again, very relevant to the times. Um, and you know, even if you pick up one of these books and you don't finish it, but you read some of it and you get something out of it, then that's, you've achieved a lot. Cause I think that there's just a lot out there. So I'm going to hide the next book so you can't see it. And I'm going to show you the cover of this one. It's kind of a cool one cause it's a, it's a picture of a person's head, but there's, um, like, uh, the shades of green, yellow, red leaves, um, kind of coming out of it. And that's the nature fix. Can you see it? I'm going to come really close. The printer needs some toner, so so there you go. That's, there's why you're not seeing too much vibrancy on it. But it's really kind of a cool cover. So that's that one. The next one, I um, love birds, and I I feed the birds. I have bird feeders in my yard. I just, I love it, you know. So I like books on birds, and this one is called What It's Like to Be a Bird. It's um, from flying to nesting, eating to singing, what birds are doing and why. It's by David Allen Sibley. I like this idea altogether because I make up my own stories about the birds in my yard and I'm like, you know, am I even anywhere close to what's going on? No, but I like to make up little stories. Um, right now we have a um, Cardinals family that has nested in one of our, on our trees. And um, so it's very close to our house and where we sit outside. So we can kind of see her in there in the nest right now. So I just, I love the idea of reading about birds. So this one says, and what it's like to be a bird, David Sibley answers the most frequently asked questions about birds we see most often. This special large format volume is geared as much to non-birders as it is to out and out obsessed, covered more, obsessed, covering more than 200 species and including more than 330 new illustrations by the author. While it focuses on familiar backyard birds, such as blue jays, nuthatches, chickadees, it also examines certain species that can be fairly easily observed um, such as a seashore dwelling Atlantic puffin. This one was published in um, 2020. And I think this is, you know, this is one, like I said, if you don't read the whole thing, but you dip in and you read about different birds um, and take something away from it, that's, that's all that makes the difference, right? So there's that one. It's right there in the bottom. <laughs> Stretching my back. This is a good stretch today. So those are two, one and two, right? I'll put it down because I don't want to keep going. <laughs> I'll get to the end and still read it again like it's a new book. All right, so much for the memory, yeah? So the next one is another one similar to um, the first one that we read, which was The Nature Fix. It's another one that talks about the scientific research um, or proof of the effects of being in nature. And this one's called Biophilia Effect, a scientific and spiritual exploration of the healing bond between humans and nature. It's by Clemens G. Arvin. Arvin? Yeah. No. Arve. There's no N. Arve. Um, <laughs> this is, did you know that spending time in the in a forest activates the va vagus nerve, which is responsible for inducing calm and regeneration? Or that spending just one single day in a wooded area increases the number of natural killer cells in the blood of almost 40% on average? We've all had an intent, an intuitive sense of the feeling power of nature. Clemens G. Arves, not Arvan, Arves' new book brings us to the science to, to verify this power, sharing fascinating research along with teachings and tools for accessing the therapeutic properties of the forest and natural world. I think that sounds great. I think that, you know, you know, the more that we learn, the better that we can, you know, utilize things that are just free. It's free to go in the forest. It's free to go out in nature. So it's so easy and easily accessible, right? So there's the cover on that one. Okay. All right. And that one is published in 2018. Okay, this next one I am so excited about. And I, I'm saying that because I'm leaning towards reading this one. This one just sounds like a movie, right? It would be beautiful in a movie. And I think she does, this particular um, author has done documentaries. So I can go on and like watch some stuff and get some more. The cover is fantastic and it's so blown out and awful on here on the paper. Just go and look it up because, um, yeah. Because my printer, when it's running out of toner, it puts streaks in it, not to mention the colors are all off. So it looks horrible. But the name of this book is Into the Planet. 
My Life as a Cave Diver. I know my friend Natalie would might want to read this one because she's really into the sea right now, and this one sounds so good. It's called Into the Planet, My Life as a Cave Diver by Jill Heinerth. Heinerth? I think I'm going to stick with Heinerth. Okay. And this one, oh my God, where's the description? Oh my goodness. I think my little papers are are not in order. <gasps> okay. Well, anyways, this one is about... Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Hold on. Hold on. They're out of order. They fell off my printer and I thought I put them in the right order. Okay. Wait. <laughs> More people have died exploring underwater caves than climbing Mount Everest. Didn't know that. And we know more about deep space than we do the depths of our oceans. Do you know that? From one of the top cave divers working today and one of the very first few women in the field, Into the Planet blends science, adventure, and memoir to bring readers face to face with the terror and beauty of, of Earth's remaining unknowns and extremes of human capability. This is the first person, um, she's the first person in history to dive deep into an Antarctic iceberg and leader of a team that discovered the ancient water remains of the Mayan civilization. This sounds fascinating. I am so afraid um, I, I uh, you know, drowning. And so I would just, uh, and I, but I'm fascinated when I watch shows that show caves underwater and things like this. So this one is really sounding like a big contender for me. Um, if you've read it, let me know. Um, but it is, it sounds really good. Now look, look at this hideous print out of it. Okay, it's it in the bottom. It's like, it's the picture of the ocean and you can see like the, cave and you could see her way down there or somebody way down in the water but that doesn't look like it It just looks like a blue blurb on here but that's definitely a, a high contender for me um, i say that where are we in the fifth or the sixth today now i haven't even started yet i know i'm so bad that was published by the way in 2019. the next one is a memoir i think i have two memoirs well I don't know if we consider this one her a memoir, this one. Maybe. Maybe that one could be considered, yeah, a memoir too. So this one's a memoir, and it is called Late Migrations by Margaret Rinkle. Um, and it's, and let me see, I'll just read a little bit about it to you, and then we'll talk about it. It was published in 2019, and it says, Growing up in Alabama, Rinkle was a devout reader and explorer of riverbeds and red dirt roads and a fiercely loved daughter. Here in brief essays, and she traces a tender and honest portrait of complicated parents, parents, her exuberant creative mother and her steady supportive father, and of the bittersweet moments that accompany a child's transition to caregiver. Um, it says um, her observations on the world surrounding her suburban Nashville home, it, in, you know, are encompassed in the book. I think that it's going to kind of uh, thread uh, nature and um, with her human evolution and our relationship with, you know, this, you know, as our parents age and how we move from being the one being taken care of to becoming the caregiver. So I think that one will be a very interesting one. I think I saw this one last year. I didn't notice it on my list, but I think that I saw the cover and I just, I'm just, you just listen, you're not going to see this cover as it should be. Take a look at it online, though. It's pretty fabulous. It's a profile of a, a girl's face with lots of vegetation and, I believe, animals. I can't even make it out on here, but you at least know it's yellow. If you get to this, you'll you'll know you got the right one, and, and it's fabulous cover, though. And that's this one right here, that yellow. Okay, so that's that one. That one's published in 2019. Okay, the next one, which is a strong contender. Now, I said I was only going to read probably one, maybe two, but... When I say contender, if it's not read this month, it will be read soon because these sound really, really good. This one I had never heard of before, and it's called, um, it was published in 2020, so it's fairly new. Um, it's The Earth in Her Hands, 75 Extraordinary Women Working in the World of Plants. Now, how cool is that? Um, and I just think that it will be one of those books that's so motivational um, and, and, and enlightening in terms of the different types of industries that we just don't know about, right? It says, in this beautiful and empowering book, Jennifer Jewell, host of Public Radio's 
award-winning program in podcast cultivating place. I've never heard of that, but we'll be looking it up. Introduces 75 inspiring women working in wide reaching fields that include botany, floral design, landscape architect, farming, herbalism, and food justice. These influencers are creating change from the ground up. And it has a very cool cover. I'm gonna cover this next one so you can't see it, but definitely a cool, cool cover on it as well. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. I hope you can see it. I hope you can see it. But that one's called The Earth in Her Hands, 75 Extraordinary Women Working in the World of Plants. I think what I'll do, um, I don't usually do that. Below, I will put down the name of the books that I mentioned here. So that will make it easier. I should have said that in the beginning of the video. <laughs> so people don't have to write it down or rewind it. I'm sorry. Pretend I said it in the beginning. I'll put them in, at the bottom. Okay. Another one that's a, you know, there's so many contenders, right? Okay, but okay, but another one that's really ranking high up there. It's ranking high, okay? This one is called Bicycling with Butterflies. Okay, this is a memoir again. And I think this sounds so cool. It's Bicycling with Butterflies, my 10,201 mile journey following the monarch migration. Excuse me, let me repeat that. 10,201 mile journey following the monarch migration on a bicycle. On a bicycle with parts that she kind of like used parts put together bicycle. It talks about her navigating like in different countries. You know, she has to go, obviously go through different countries to follow them. Um, oh my God, I think this sounds so, so good. This one was published in, oh, this was published this year. So this was just published last month, but I'm all over the cover and I am so intrigued by this one too that this one might even be one I might purchase for my bookshelf. I mean, I love the cover. I love the concept. I don't think the story can go wrong. How can you go wrong telling about your adventures following the butterflies? I don't know. It could, but I feel like confident that it won't. So I might actually purchase it. And this is butter, but Bicycling with Butterflies. So that's it right there. And it's such a poor printout. But if you get a chance to see it online, it's all butterflies, monarch butterflies on the top. And then the little person drive riding their bicycle on the bottom. I, I think that sounds fun. These all sound like fun books to me, right? Well, some of them were a little bit more serious. Okay, so there's that one. The next one in the second to the last one is called Extraordinary Insects, the Fabulous Indispensable Creatures Who Run Our World. And this is by Anne... I'm gonna give it a shot. Verdrup Thigason. That's what I'm gonna say. It could be Surdrup, because I don't know if SV sounds, but I, I that's the best I can do. This was published in 2020, and it's basically an introduction to the world of insects and why we couldn't survive without them. Um, the reason why I like this one, A, from just that little description, is just that, you know, we think about bees. Um, we don't, you know, there's pollinators just in general, right? But we don't think about, um, you know, all the other insects and, and what their role is in keeping the whole system going. Um, and I think this will be one of those books that is a great book, like, you know, if you're <laughs> talking with your friends, you can just throw out a little fact while, what do you know? Um, you know, I think that it's just one of those ones that you will, it'll be a gem because you'll have so much more. And I know I'll appreciate them more. I mean, I think as a gardener, I do appreciate insects, some more than others. Um, but I think it'll just heighten that, that uh, awareness of them and their importance. So I think it had a different name prior. Yes, it was previously, previously published, oh my God, PP, as Buzz Sting Bite. Um, and they changed it now to Extraordinary Insects. I think that that probably was, let's, let's listen to that. Buzz, Sting, Bite, do you want to read a book like that? No, but Extraordinary Insects draws me in. So the changing of the title, there's two different covers for the Kindle version I actually really like, um, but this one is actually kind of cool too, but of course you're not gonna see all that goodness on my printout. Um, but this is what the cover looks like now on this book. Um, but check it out and check out the Kindle version because I think that's really pretty fantastic as well. This one, like I said, was just published in 2020. So it's a fairly new book as well. Um, but it sounds very interesting. I don't think, 
if I were going to do the bicycle or this, I would do the bicycle. This is something I definitely want to get to, but probably won't be as high as some of the other ones I've mentioned. Here's another one about birds again, because you know I like the birds. Um, and this one is, oh my God, I have two more. I said two more. I, I said two more, but I have one more after this one. Okay, Field Notes from an Unintentional Birder by Julia Zarankin. And um, this one I think just sounds really interesting because it's a memoir and it follows this woman who is, um, she's kind of in her midlife, I think. She's in her, she starts, I, this is what it is. At age 35, she starts, discovers and starts looking into different, you know, uh, hobbies that she could follow. And she just really didn't expect this to be the thing that really um, took her. And so if I read, I'll read a little bit of it, what it says here, but I think that I like the idea of, and later in life, um, you know, following your interests that may lead you to a really hobby that will change your life, okay? And I think that just sounds fascinating and I just love that it's with birds. So it says, when Julia Zarankin saw her first red-winged blackbird at the age of 35, she didn't expect that it would change her life. Recently divorced and auditioning hobbies during a stressful career transition, she stumbled on bird watching. Initially out of curiosity for the strange breed of humans, for the strange breed of humans who were multi-pocketed, vested, carrying spotted scopes, and discussed the finer points of optics and dis disturbing feather with disturbing feather. Sorry, what she never could have predicted was that she would become one of them. Not only would she become to she would come to identify proudly as a birder, but birding would ultimately lead her to find love, uncover a new language, and lay down her roots. Hello. That's not like a story. A little love story in there too. And birds and somebody, you know, transitioning um, from one part of life to another. And I think that sounds really cool. So this is Field Notes from an Unintentional Birder. It is published in 2020. Fairly new as well. These books are all pretty new within the last few years. So easy probably to find. Um, so that one sounds very interesting to me too. The last one is the book that I said that they have as the read along. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do this yet because I haven't got a hold. My hold has not come up yet, but I have the audio version of this book. So I hope to get that so that I can read it. But again, I probably won't make it to the 14th deadline. It will be at the end of the month. And this one is a memoir as well. And it's The Way Through the Woods. And it talks about this particular woman who moved from Norway to Malaysia, fell in love, um, got married, but after 32 years, her husband passed away suddenly, and she's trying to figure out what's next in her life. Um, and she um, discovers, um, she takes a course, that's what it is, a, a beginner course in mushrooming. And she's surprised at how much she really enjoys it and goes on. Oh, oh please. I knew I was going to need it eventually. Mm -hmm. She goes on, um, to, you know, to actually, I think, believe follow that into a career path. So this one is called the way through the woods on mushrooms and morning. And it's by long lit wound and the cover is really gorgeous, but not on my printout. This one was published in 2019. Oh my God. I got it. The paper, what? There it is right there. So that's that one. That one I'm definitely gonna do. The key is I'm hoping the hold will come soon before the month's over so I can listen to it. I think it will be a great one to listen to. Um, but I'm definitely interested to hear about her experience with this because mushrooming is something I totally, you know, I eat them, <laughs> but I don't know anything about that. So I think that will be fascinating to hear that story. So those are 10 possible options for a springathon for 2021 for me. Um, I hope you guys like them. Maybe you pick up one. If you've read one, let me know if you thought they were good. Um, but I, I, gotta, I gotta hurry up and make a decision and kind of just sink in. But I think you can tell by my excitement, there's a couple that were really standouts that I, I think that I'm gonna try to lean toward and do. Um, I will leave links also to Heidi and um, Natalie and I will leave um, the list of books that I mentioned today so that you guys can take a look and see if there's anything you want to read. Let me know also if there are any books I didn't talk about that you've read that you think are good um, nature books 
because I am always trying to add to my list. Like I will continue and just, I got space here. I could add them in here. So let me know. Anyways, have a great day and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.